next and how to fix this permanently i mean if you have any uh you know if you have uh, okay i think most of us you know have uh, have faced this issue where their uh, you know their critical sqls are flipping the plan or doing a toggle right so how we can proactively manage or how we can proactively handle this situation how we can do that so of course you know uh, uh, a, a laid back approach would be like okay you see that thing happening in the awr report or in the sqlhc report or sql t report like there are better plans available or better plan hash values available right but still it's picking a suboptimal plan or you know the costliest plan plan among the others so uh, of course you know in that case uh, the laid back approach would be like okay you go and you fix it manually right you check for the best plan which is there in available for the sql id and you fix it using coexfr or uh, uh, you know dbms underscore spm method right so what we are seeing right now in the screen is how to fix uh, the plan permanently for a sql id where the plan flip is happening but that's a laid back approach right but what uh, is there anything what we can do to proactively you know manage the situation so uh, you know they, i have few scripts uh, let me show you now what is this sql so the sql is uh, you know is basically query is your views db underscore hist underscore sql stat and db underscore hist underscore snapshot so i basically doing it's a very simple query by the way what i'm doing i'm just no, i'm doing nothing i'm just doing a join between you know db hist sql stat and db hist snapshot right i'm taking average and i i'm actually uh, deducing or um, uh, uh, getting the normal standard deviation from it right so let me explain the output so for example if you want to examine the sequels uh, which have a different plan hash value and have executed once in the database so this basically provides you information on the basis of that right so for example if i check this output so here is this is the sequel which in total got executed 32 times during the entire duration of the awr retention right for example you have awr pool retention set to 30 days so in the in those total 30 days the sequel got executed 32 times and the, whenever it got executed and so minimum time it took to complete not even a second few ms only right but the maximum it it actually took 23 seconds to complete so if you compare or or you or you if you deduce or if you uh, get the standard deviation you will get something like this like 30701 is the normal standard deviation or an average i mean that's basically average between column 3 and column 4 i mean that's the uh, deviation between minimum elapsed time for example it hardly took a second not even a second few ms only but uh, at, at the other time the same sequel got executed and took 23 seconds to complete so if you get the normal standard deviation what you can do right and uh, you will get the standard deviation so this says 30701 so this is pretty expensive right but if someone asks me like uh, because in totally it actually pointed out 35 sql so it's not possible to fix each one of them which will be the most critical here so what i'll do i'll go and check this and for the sequels which got executed maximum number of times and where the this uh, difference in minimum elapsed time and maximum elapsed time is huge so but but yeah the first attention of the first point uh, will always be the execution so for example if we compare it this sequel this this sql it got exe uh, executed 171 times right and let me check the retention okay we've got 30 days of total uh no sorry retention is 15 so in short in in a period of 15 days this query got executed how many times 2200 and sorry 1071 times and uh it the the minimum elapsed time this query took uh, got executed i mean to say was under a second right uh sorry 50 seconds so less than a minute right so but maximum it took is 5 minutes Uh, I'm so sorry. 
so sorry, five seconds, 63 MS, right? So this one, if you check, it actually uh, taking less than a second to complete, right? So if you calculate the standard deviation, it's, uh, it will give you this value of 5.2.1. So this will be the first candidate for me to fix this, right? What will be the next one? Uh, uh, maybe this one, right? Though it, the difference is, seems very less, but take a look at the number of executions. So within 15 days, this query got executed 2,283 times, right? And minimum it took, you know, 0 0.19 second and maximum it took five seconds to complete. So let me take an example, right? I have this, the SQL, I named it as 1.SQL. I have another version of this, right? Where it actually asks for the SQL ID. Here, if you take a look, this SQL ID has got three different executions. And with this plan hash value, the SQL got executed single only one only once and this this is with you know 0 0.505 second on an average it, it takes to complete and out of that uh, almost 99 percent it took on cpu and take a look at the pio as a physical read or disk reads it's it's taking nothing nil but yeah there are a few logical input outputs or memory scans or memory reads but yeah it's 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 one of the best plan, not a not one of the best. I mean, this is the best. I mean, uh, best possible plan what this SQL should follow. But due to some reasons, uh, only single executions was happened using this particular plan hash value, and most of the executions happened with this plan hash value, which is pretty expensive in terms of average elapsed time, in terms of CPU usage, and this one got PIOs as well or disk reads. Any questions? Hello? No person. You're finding it interesting by the yes, way? Yes, I mean, yes, yes. This is pretty interesting topic, right? Because mm. many of the in many of the projects you see, you know, SQL Hello. is, you know, mm. yes, is, is behaving a little weird. So in, in one morning, it the same SQL is, you know, is com getting completed in only one second day. Another day you, you see like the same SQL is now completing or taking 15 minutes, Take, yes. right? So this is the proactive way how you can handle the situation Right. If you want, I can provide you these two scripts. Right. So accordingly, you can take actions maybe after every, you know, I remember like there was this, I mean, in my last organization, in my last company, uh, there was this very unstable, you know, environment. So that database was actually running on 11G release one that itself is pretty buggy. So the, uh, every now and then, because the application team is, you know, is very poor uh, in writing this, their SQL code. So that's why, I mean, uh, you know, we are getting a lot of, uh, you know, plan flip situations there. So a customer asked me like if there is any any chance or any possibility to proactively um, uh, handle this situation. So that's the time, um, you know, I actually uh, took help of these two scripts. And uh, so every 15 days or so we identify the SQL and automatically we fix them. But okay. this is a temporary fix, by the way. For example, if you want to know the real reason why the plan, plan flip got happened in the first place, but that's very, you know, a complicated topic or subject. It's not that easy to answer here in, you know, 10 minutes or 20 minutes. But what you can do, you can go and query v dollar SQL underscore shared underscore cursors. So SQL underscore shared underscore cursor um, will give you information. V dollar SQL underscore shared underscore cursor. SQL underscore shared underscore. Take a look. V dollar SQL underscore shared underscore. Hmm. It's cursor. Okay. okay. So okay. it's it's there with lot of reasons. Most of them are related with you know cursor and your bind, right? But uh, it will also it, it always give you. For example, let me check for this one, right? Select all from v dollar uh, SQL share yeah, cursor where SQL ID equals. Let's check. OK, the output is a little weird. So we, you need to look for the uh, for the one which is with value Y. OK, here it is. You, you use feedback statistics. So there is some problem with the used feedback statistics. So now you have to go and query. OK, let me go and check. I have another query. Uh, 
overall statistics of Use the data. feedback states. Okay, now, if you go and check, I mean, I'm talking about last 15 days. Most of the invalidations or most of the plan flip situation happened due to role invalid mismatch, right? So this actually caused these many SQL IDs to flip their plan. Right, role role invalid. Yes, role invalid underscore mismatch. This you need to check, right? Uh, because uh, you know this is something uh, related with I remember uh, with the CBO statistics and its validation basically, right? Okay. So I need to check basically, like because this is the first time I'm actually checking this this box. This is a this is one of the production system which we rarely touch. By the way, it's not that critical, so that's the reason. Uh, Okay, so this this saying like 100, 1,358 SQL uh, got were impacted all because this reason why it's not shared because role invalid mismatch. So uh, you need to go and check, right? And this is also come up with the reason, this XML value as a reason, right? I so this know. you need to expand the the length of this column and it will provide you more information, right? What was the reason basically, right? But yes, it actually says the last column is with the Y value. That means that is the cause. OK. All right. OK, now I'm coming back here like um, like what is the laid back approach to fix this? You can go and check COE underscore XFR underscore X SQL underscore profile, right? For example, uh, this is your SQL, right? Uh, this is your SQL and now you want to force this SQL to use this particular plan hash value. So how you can do that? You can you need to go and call COE XFR XQL underscore profile dot SQL and then you have to pass the SQL ID or then the plan hash value, right? Let me show you how to do it. But this is production. Uh, I won't be able to execute it, but I'll give you some idea. XFR underscore. Right, though it says like you have to pass the SQL ID and the plan hash value. But if you go and if you provide only the SQL ID, it will automatically. Hmm? Oh, no need actually. No, 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 that's that's wrong. Yeah, so it has picked the SQL ID. Now it itself will provide what happened. There is some problem with it. It says it's not there in memory and not even DB his SQL plan. Oh, I did a mistake. Oh, sorry, I'm extremely sorry. Uh, XFR. Now it's asked for the SQL ID, right? Let's pass the SQL ID. It will provide you the list of available plan hash values. Okay, now it's it says like I've got three different plan hash values for this SQL ID. Which one you want to force? So let me go and use this one, right? Okay. This is still not completed, right? This is only the first step what you actually took. Now because at the end it says you to execute this script which has which it actually has generated for you, right? So if you go and do this, then it will automatically fix the plan with, uh, that the plan hash value with the SQL ID. But so as I said, the baseline. Yes, yes, this is baseline. That's absolutely correct. Yes. Right, so this is how you can do or fix the plan using COE XFR SQL profile, right? So that was the first step. The second step demands you to execute this query because if you go and if you see now, you see another file got created, right? So this one you need to execute. So once you execute it, that plan will automatically. Fix. Uh, I have one question. In yeah. our case, yeah. in our case, uh, you have seen the lots of uh, as well is there. Then uh, I don't know, even I don't know the which um, as per report, I can see that one ex, uh, has value is fine, but uh, if I fix that is has value, means maybe it can be issue in, in future also because application means uh, what uh, some, all the time it has changed that has uh, value. Yes, 
hash so, value gets changed but that's that something different right different but huh? your sql id is not getting changed correct mm, yes mm. because sql id will only get ch ch change if you do some massive changes mm. yes, into yes. your uh, bind values basically mm. and will which uh, mm. dynamic statistics or adaptive feature realize okay mm. if you do these kind of change this can bring disaster to the sql performance so they will automatically do and uh, go and generate a fresh sql id for you in that case but if they ob if they feel like this is okay to use the sql id they will go and will use the same flash plan hash value which you have fixed right okay. so okay. until unless you are doing some big or massive changes to the sql or, the, or, or to the bind values uh it's not going to you know uh, change anything for you but if you do some restructuring for example if you do if you change something in your clause your sql text itself then of course it will produce a new sql id and there is no sense of using that old one because that old sql id was for a different sql text if you, even mm. if you uh, you add a single quote or anything that will be treated as a new sql and new sql id will be generated right yes okay so that's how you actually you know uh, fix the plan i've shown you how you can do proactively how you can do using the lazy approach uh, so i've shown you how to do it using coexfr sql underscore profile another way to create it using dbms underscore sql tune right that can also be used to create or to uh, you know to create the custom profiles <laughs> sql uh, baseline so this that's how you create right dbms underscore spm load plans from the from the cursor cache for example you have the plans that is available in the cursor right you have the you need to pass the plan hash value and then mm. the sql id and then it's it will be fixed then uh, another one is the use of ash or historical views 